Happy Divine Mercy Sunday. Today, the second Sunday of Easter, or Sunday after Easter, is celebrated by the church as Divine Mercy Sunday. This feast was instituted by Pope John Paul II, and the feast originated from the apparition or the vision or the appearance of Jesus to St. Margaret. That is an apparition of Jesus to Margaret. Was it the first one? There have been several apparitions in the church. Even in the Bible, we have what they called pre-resurrection apparition and post-resurrection apparition. Jesus was both God and man. When Jesus came to live among us, he lived in his human nature, but sometimes he entered into his divine nature. Like he could walk on the water, and Peter tried to walk on the water. What was happening to Peter? He was going to sink. He was human. Jesus was God. He was divine. He could walk in the water. Jesus could change five loaves of bread to feed so many people. So he lived in in his human nature, but sometimes he also entered in his divine nature to do certain things for us. Now, when Jesus died and resurrected, Jesus lived in his divine nature, but he could visit us in his human nature. That is why when the disciples have gathered together, he have locked the doors for the fear of the Jews. They didn't want anybody to come there. If you want to come there, you have to knock, maybe use a a language sign for them to know that you are one of them before they could admit you. But with all these doors locked, they could find Jesus there. So Jesus, at this time in his divine nature, could visit them in the human nature, speak to them. When he came to them in the room, what did he say? Peace be with you. And Today's reading happens on the Sunday after Easter. Jesus resurrected on Sunday, the first day of the week. And then he showed himself to the disciples. Thomas was not there. He came, he was told. He did not believe. Then on another Sunday, when they were gathered in the room, Jesus appeared to them. So that was also a a Sunday. Jesus appeared to them. He called Thomas, come and see my side, come and see my hands, and do not doubt. And these are the reason why Sunday has also become important for us Christians. Before Jesus, Saturday was the Sabbath day for them, was the most important day in their religion. With Jesus resurrecting on Sunday, revealing himself to his disciples on Sunday, the Holy, God, the Holy Spirit descending upon them, Pentecost, on Sunday, then Sunday became a special day for them. Sunday became the day of the Lord. Sunday became the day that they encountered the Lord God in a special way. So Sunday has become very important for us Christians to replace Saturday, which was used by the Jews. So when we speak of appellation, it is Jesus who is in his divine nature appearing to some human beings to have 
interaction with them, to give them guidance to restore their faith. In apparitions in the Bible time, we have Jesus resurrecting, appearing to Mary Magdalene, appearing to the disciples, including Thomas, as we have heard, and appearing to some few people at the time of before his resurrection. Then after the, his resurrection, we have some appearance of Jesus. When Stephen was being stoned to death, he cried out and said, I see the heavens open, and Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. So it was a form of an appearance, apparition, vision to Stephen. And the people did not believe, and they stoned him to death. When Paul has taken a letter from the chief priest and was going to Damascus to, uh, to attack, persecute the Christians, Jesus appeared to him on the way to Damascus and spoke to him. Jesus also spoke to, appeared to a man called Ananias to guide him what to do to Paul for him to become, to get, to be baptized and to become a Christian. And if you go to the book of Revelation, we have so many appearances to John where Jesus spoke to him to guide him in many things. Beyond the Bible time in the church, we also have several apparitions, several visions, or several appearances of Jesus. And in fact, in the church, not only of Jesus, but also Mary. We hear of Mary appearing, Mary's apparition at Fatima, at Luz, at, in Mexico, in Portugal, in the other places. So Mary has also been appearing to people. Today we celebrate divine mercy, and when we celebrate divine mercy, we are celebrating God's, Jesus' appearance to, Fat, uh, to Faustina, and the message he gave to her to guide her or to be given to all Christians. And this has led to the devotion of the divine mercy, the divine mercy devotion we have in the church. Before then, there have been several apparitions. Jesus appeared to St. Francis when he was praying in the church, and Jesus said to him, build my church. For him, he took it literally, and he began to build the very church in which he was praying, and he had that apparition. It was later on that he realized that Jesus was calling him to bring transformation in the church. That is to build the church. There were people like St. Juliana, who Jesus appeared to him. And that also led to the celebration of the Feast of Corpus Christi, becoming a universal feast. There were times Jesus appeared to St. Peter Julian, who also established or founded the Congregation of the Blessed Sacrament and the Servant of the Blessed Sacrament to promote the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Jesus appeared to people like St. Catherine of Siena, and she was inspired to such an apparition and at that time, the church was in crisis. The seat of the Pope had moved from Rome to Avignon in France. And through her efforts, St. Catherine of Siena, they were able to restore the papacy back to Rome. People like Teresa of Avila, Teresa of Lizzo, they all had an apparition, appearance of Jesus speaking to them, guiding them to lead the church in some way. There was apparition of St. Margaret Mary Alacoc, who Jesus guided him, and that brought about the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so we have the apparition of St. Faustina, which has also led to the devotion of the Divine Mercy. And in all this apparition, what is the ultimate end? What is the purpose? It is meant for God to, re to renew 
our faith in him, to trust in God. That is why when we celebrate the divine mercy, we see the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you. So it was meant to restore our faith in God, our faith in Jesus Christ, to trust in Jesus and not to depend on ourselves. And especially in a time of crisis, since Faustina, during his time, the world was troubling with communism and people were disturbed. And through this guidance and through prayers, Christianity were able to defeat, or God, through God's power, defeat communism. As today, we have just read from the gospel, through the apparition of Jesus to Thomas and the disciples, what happened? Thomas, who did not believe, came to believe in the resurrection of Christ. And he made a profound statement which even the other disciples who had seen Jesus a week before had not made. My Lord and my God. So through this apparition, we have come to see Thomas professing a profound faith in Jesus, claiming, proclaiming him to be his Lord and God. And so he's become a lesson to us, inspiring all of us to see Jesus as our Lord and our God, to trust in him. So this is very important. The apparition is always important for us in the church. But at the same time, the church is always very careful to handle it so that the church will not be deceived by any person. So as we celebrate today, may we continue to pray, to thank God for his love and kindness and mercy to us. Why should the Lord go through such an extent to appearing to Thomas, who had doubted, to appearing to the disciples? Because he loved them, he's so merciful and kind to them. He wants to help them not to lose their faith so that they could share the blessing of the power of the resurrection. And when we reflect on this, it is also meant for all of us to experience this mercy and kindness of God. It's also to tell us that God, Jesus, is still alive. Jesus is not dead. God cannot die. God lives forever. So Jesus is still living. God is alive. God is not dead. So that is the message of us. And therefore, if we are putting our trust in God, if we are putting our trust in Jesus, then we are doing the right thing. And by our faith in him, he will bring us to share the power of his resurrection, to bring us salvation, to bring us freedom, to bring us liberty, free us from the power of evil, power of dominion, bring, free us from the evil hands, that is the message God is giving to all of us. So may we continue to pray in this celebration and ask God to deepen our faith so that we may always trust in him. As it is the slogan, the national slogan of America, in God we trust. We should always trust in God because God never disappoints people who put their trust in him.